Hello, lovers, and welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and today's guest is a Valentine's Day miracle. I'm so glad to have him here. Um, one of my favorite people, the most loving, the most caring uh, person in comedy today, Um so much going on. He is a season, uh, season two of Loot, which is coming out on Apple Plus on April 3rd. You've seen him in the Trolls franchise. I mean, so much going on. On tour, on the road, it's Ron Funches. It feels like you had two and then petered out. I I had three and then petered out. Because <laughs> I was like, I could do this. Th- uh, and then it was just like, because <laughs> you've done so much. I tried King to Shark. There we go. Thank DC you. Comics. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. I'm also uh, in a Nicktoon called Rock, Paper, Scissors All that right, comes relax. out today. Relax. Oh, wait. It's out today. With Will TV Senor, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you like doing. Um, voiceover i love it it's so much fun it's the best it's like a dream job yeah you get to just wake up and then I'm, the studio's five minutes from my house so i just put on pjs roll right in get to be a kid for an hour and Ugh. then go back one of my favorite things is sometimes i'll like have a um record for like nine o'clock and then if i'm back at my house at like 9 15 i'm like what like what a is- day's <laughs> worth of work <laughs> I did that. Good night. Yeah. yeah, I'm done. Back to sleep. Nap time. So Rock, Paper, Scissors premieres today on mm-hmm. Nickelodeon? It does. That's fantastic. And that's just about three friends? Three rock- friends, Rock, Paper, and Scissors. Uh. It's like uh, Aqua Preteen mm-hmm. Hunger Force is what mm-hmm. I call it. With Meatball and Shake? Yeah, cool. So it's, but it's for kids. But we're a Rock, a Paper, and Scissors. But if you like Aqua Teen, you might like this. Yeah. It's a little, a little taboo. A it's little. a little bit. It's a for kids and adults. Um, it's fun jokes, but like it's when you can have adult jokes without cursing. I think is really fun. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And they when the parents really good get ones. it. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Well, congrats. I have to check that out. Thank you. I love. Uh, I mean, what, what has been the best part about, you know, I feel like the trolls franchise is so massive Mm -hmm. and playing Cooper has just been so much fun for you. Do people come up to you and be like, oh my God, my kids love you. And yeah, no, that's the best of shows when sometimes people are like, oh, I like your stand up, and my, my kids love you too. And Mm -hmm. they don't, they don't know this other part of you. And, um, sometimes one of the best things is that like, I've had kids that are sick or, or just their birthdays or whatever, and I'll leave them a little voicemail as Cooper, and that's always fun. That, oh. makes, me, that makes me feel really good. Yeah, because I remember going to um, Universal Studios, and it is just trolls. Mm-hmm. Trolls, trolls, trolls. I'm like, that is just so much fun just seeing these kids light up for trolls. And they just had the new one with the boy band. In mm-hmm. uh, sync With sync yeah. And Lance was like talking about like being in the Trolls franchise. I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, it was a great one for me because I had exactly one line (laughs) and I still had to go to the premiere. Yeah, in and out. (laughs) It's 9.15, I have to go. Yeah, That's so great. That's so fun. Well, awesome. Um, well, let's jump into it. Okay. I first of all, I it took me a minute to, to figure out that just saying was about like you. Is that just Justin saying stuff? Yeah. You're Thank saying you for stuff. getting it. You were the first person in over a hundred episodes <laughs> that actually tied those two together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's me saying stuff. Yeah. And bringing my friends in to say some stuff. To say some stuff about you know the stuff going on in the world and people's careers and. Uh, pop culture. How's That's your it. career going right now? The what? How's your career going right it's now? It's great. I wake up at nine and I put on my pajamas and come here and go home. I love it. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm having a good time. The podcast is doing well. We've had some amazing guests. Um, I'm now over at Sirius XM with Jeff Lewis. Oh, that's doing fun. Doing shows with him. So it's been fun. People are glad you're here with us Ooh. this week. Oh, yeah. The people? People. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, my guest this week is Ron Funches. And people are like, oh my God, I can't wait. I love him. Okay. So yes, it's going to be a people. fun uh, post-Super Bowl show. You obviously saw it. I saw half of it. Yeah. Did you quit at halftime? No, I made the other half, which was good. I saw the second half. Did you start at halftime and then finish this? 
I started at the third quarter and then went back and watched some of the halftime show because I got a text uh, from a girl that I'm highly interested in talking about how much she was enjoying the sparkly Usher thing, which I found out was a uniformal thing that a bunch of guys were getting texts about women enjoying the Usher halftime show. And so I was just felt flattered that I was the man that she texted <laughs> after Usher made her horny. That's a great way to kick off your Valentine's, you know? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I love that you're getting the Usher text. Yeah. Um, I here. I'm going to be honest with you. I love your Beetlejuice hoodie. Thank you. I was violated today in a way. Oh no! I know. Hold on. I got a shirt ordered specifically for you today. I got a notification that it was delivered, and the Amazon person took a picture of it, left it on my door. Was not there. Oh no! Someone grabbed it. Stole my shirt. So that's why I'm wearing a jean jacket and a red shirt. But it's for Valentine's Day. But it was a it was a cute little Care Bear that I was going to wear oh, today. I love and it's that. the worst feeling. I feel so like Ugh, like because you have to have a key to get into my building. Mm -hmm. So it's an inside job. I hope not because I like all my neighbors. Somebody took it. I think it was probably someone having a Super Bowl party mm -hmm. and they invited people over and they might have gotten drunk or something. Someone was like, look at that. This is mine now. I'm that's, hoping that's what no, happened. No, that's too much of a story. <sighs> I know, but that's... We got to figure out who's your enemy in your if apartment. You stole company. my Care Bear shirt. I swear to God, I'll find you. <laughs> I hope I see them in the building wearing, wearing it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there will be a reckoning. <laughs> You're going to have pissed off gay bear. That's going to be the lost care bear. Um, so anyways, star set an event. Mm -hmm. I I saw Ice Spice. Ice Spice was there. I, I didn't mean, even know they were friends. They were. Mm -hmm. Or they are. Yes. Okay. Ice Spice was attending the Grammys. Ice Spice has kind of been everywhere. Ice Spice is getting dragged for apparently throwing demo uh, demonic symbols uh, up in the air at the game. Oh, was she? Yeah. She I feel just like... got bored and decided to do no, that? No, I just feel like... Decided to conjure? I mean, I feel if you're going to conjure, do it at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Two million dollar VIP box. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um... But yeah, I just feel like always the day after, that's when people like, mm -hmm. what did that mean? Everyone's like a Taylor Swift song. I they, just want to know if her hair is a wig or is real. It feels, I do too. Feels fake. What, what do you think? Seems fake. It doesn't, I don't think that could be a real person's hair. <laughs> well, I get that too. Some mm -hmm. people think that my hair's fake. True. But I think Ice Spice goes home, takes it off, mm -hmm. puts it on her lampshade. And says, fooled him again and goes, <laughs> and goes to sleep. I think so, too. I do wonder if Ice Spice's hair is real or fake. I think it's I think it's cute. Ice Spice is the first female rapper that came in around that made me know I was old. Where I was just like, no, I'm not attracted to this because this is a child. <laughs> but she's this also a child she could wearing be a child. clown's wig. She could also be 48. We will just never know. No, that's a, she looks like, yeah, that's a child. Yeah. How old is Ice Spice? Was she born in like, if she was born in 2012, this podcast is over. How Ice old? Spice, she was born in 2000. Oh. 2000. She's yeah. Four. She's older than my son. I didn't even think that. I didn't She's expect that. She's 24 years old. Her birthday's on January 1st. She's oh, a New Year's baby. Oh, beautiful. Little Ice Spice. Yeah. I think she's cute. And her new song, You Ain't the Shit. You just the fart is that's uh, a song. It's like who knew that that would be a hit Billboard song one day. Wow! And everyone's dancing. to I've it. heard one of her songs, but which when, when you hear one, you've heard them all. They yeah. all sound the same. They do, as far as I've heard. Uh, but I just can't get into the. I mean, I'm just like, oh, I'm older. It's not the rhythm pattern for me. Everything's just like and the guys are. I'm like, is everyone okay? <laughs> um, but so many people were there. Of course, everyone was talking about Taylor, but Blue Ivy was there with Jay-Z, Beyonce, Lady Gaga was sitting alone with bedazzled eyes. Yeah, she looked great there. I, I mean, that. we had um, Blake Lively, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. Um, her was there. She actually performed with um, Usher. 
Overall, I thought it was a fun, star-studded event. Yeah, my 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 friends, he designed the the, the um, costumes for the marching band, and that made me happy in Usher's him. halftime show. Yeah, the whole band. Yeah, he did all the whole band. How long did that take? Apparently, a long time. He said, <laughs> I asked him. He said it was over 120 different suits. Dang. Yeah. Not this one though. Not not Usher suits. The 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 ones with the tubas playing. Yeah, the tubas. I don't know if he did those too. I don't know. Uh, but if they got like a little stripey on them, then they, he did them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, I felt like, speaking of Ice Spice, I felt like I identified with Ice Spice. However, I will be Old Spice. Okay. Um, Ice Spice was very, you could tell it was her first football game yeah. ever. <laughs> she didn't seem like she was very engaged. She uh, tried. She yeah. was like. What's happening? And Taylor's like, well, I learned about this three months ago, so I'll tell you. I'm an expert now. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like I, I could definitely, I, I I tried to watch the game. I was like... Did you see that clip of um, Taylor Swift introducing Ice Spice to the other Kelsey brother, Jason? Jason, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun clip. Yeah. Because it was like him meeting like a, a daughter's friend. You know, he was <laughs> <Yeah>. so... <laughs> Gentlemanly, he hugged oh, her. Good, okay, and good like, to meet you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nice here's to some taffy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but overall, I did think it was it was a fun game. I I watched the first half. Okay, and you didn't like this. You didn't want to stick around. I saw the halftime. Mm -hmm. I liked the halftime. Okay, a lot of people are giving Usher <laughs> a lot of shit, and I feel like everybody's just so negative now. Mm -hmm. Um, did I think it was the best? No. Did I think it was the worst? No. I was highly entertained. Mm. You know? Um, people are coming after Alicia Keys because she was off key uh, at the beginning. But I'm like, you know what? When you're performing live and everyone in the world is watching you, you're going to have a little pressure, you know? Absolutely. I was I was laughing at the lady who fell off the pole. Um, did you see that? No, I didn't if see that. If you watch the clip, I think it's with Ludacris and Usher. There's a woman on the pole, and she just, like, falls off the pole. And no one's talking about her. There was also the guy that was thrown up in the air, and everyone's like, is he okay? I also, one of the things I love about the Super Bowl, and I'd like to talk to you about, mm -hmm. is how they've managed... To find the zeitgeist to pick up everybody, where they're like, if we get rappers that are 30 years past their prime, we'll get people who like the old rap, and mm -hmm. then we'll get the people who are just watching. You get just full women and gays for the halftime mm -hmm. who only want to watch the first half of the show, and then you get people who like the game. How did this happen? It's the whole conspiracy, because now everyone's saying that the game was rigged. Everyone's like, of course Kansas City won, because this is the fairy tale that everyone wanted. Uh, Ice Spice is summoning demons. Mm. <laughs> Um, I and I, I that's what I liked about it. It was that there was something for everybody. Um, the gays were like not having it, and then they were like, sit down because here is the wicked trailer. And the gays were like, <laughs> we're not ready. Um, but so many fun, so many fun, um, moments. I going back to the halftime show, I thought. Usher did great. You know, I feel like there was, you know, he took his shirt off. Classic Usher. You know what I did love, though? Bringing Lil John back. Mm -hmm. uh, Ludacris back. I loved. Um, there was something nostalgic about hearing shots, 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 shots. I was like, in Vegas, mm -hmm. I was like, it yeah, makes sense a simpler now. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, uh, it just took me back to like drinking Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> and just making horrible decisions. <laughs> and I just, it felt good. Very early 2000s, like, who cares? I'll live forever. So how did you even find out who won the game? You just played Twitter. It? Okay. Oh, sorry, X. <laughs> well, yeah, I watched the halftime show and then I was like, all right, we did it. Mm -hmm. And then I know from past Super Bowls that the second half is, could go either way. But the commercials aren't as good either. Mm -hmm. And so tuned out. And then I was like, let's see how the game's going. And then I was like, oh, shit. They're like tied. And then it was, oh, they're going into overtime. And I was like, that's exciting. And then it was 
you know, Magic. Kansas City one. Yes. I was like, okay. I thought I was excited. I was hoping that we'd get the proposal and everything. See, you wanted more. I wanted a full Disney story. We did? Why not? And then for her, to, I wanted her to, for him to propose right there and her to say yes. And then she said, only if Donald Trump loses the election. I know, and everyone's like, no! <laughs> just, everyone just eviscerates like a yeah. sonic boom goes off. That's my favorite thing right I now. Is the Trumpies versus the Swifties. It's fun. But we didn't get that. Just a well, white on white civil war. <laughs> Oh, uh, white on orange, <laughs> white on orange civil war. Um, but I, he, there was a fairy tale moment that happened because after Usher performed, he went and got married to his girlfriend Jennifer uh, at a private Super Bowl after party with family and friends. Oh, they got married. Mm -hmm. He says, "Do you Does take she this know woman about to his history?" I was. <laughs> I thought about it as well. I thought about it as well, Ron. I was like, do you take this woman to be your wife? And he said, yeah. So, um, I I don't know. I'm sure there had to have been some sort of a conversation. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was kind of cute. He's, you know, 45. They've been dating for a while. And uh, I feel like, you know, if Taylor and Travis aren't going to get married, Usher's like, hold my beer. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. But I agree. I did. I'm. I'm kind of glad it didn't go, you know, full Taylor Travis like that. I, the world's not ready for that. It would have exploded. Yeah, I would have loved it. It would have been magical. However, we did get a little ick. That's what the kids call it mm -hmm. on TikTok. I saw um, a lot of cringe this last weekend. There was a lot of cringe. There was a lot of cringe. This what was last your weekend? favorite cringe? Oh, my favorite cringe. Yeah. Two favorite things. Uh, I mean, if you're asking honestly, one was a video of uh, a bunch of people walking out on David Lucas uh, after he did George Floyd jokes. And then the other one. Oh, I saw that. Was of the video of Bert. And Tom making an idiot of themselves on the in front of CJ Stroud. I was like, this is some of the most cringy shit I've seen in my life. A lot Couldn't of cringe. Turn away. But you know what? Here's the thing. Yes, on both of those. I also there was the the girls at the Sephora, which made me cringe as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, I feel like if you're gonna do cringe and ick, what a better place than Vegas? Yeah, no, it made sense. Yeah, I was like perfect storm. Lots Getting of super lots drunk. Of douchery. Yeah. Lots of just, uh, Travis did it. Afterwards, he was like, Viva Las Vegas! And Taylor was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, that's what you signed up for, girl. Yeah, yeah. And then even after they went, uh, after they won the game, they went to, like, the win and, like, had an after party. And, like, it was a lot of ick. Yeah. A lot, like, the two of them jamming out to Taylor's song and they're pointing at each other. And I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. no. Corny. <laughs> let him win. Every let him be happy. There's a lot of Taylor. Kansas City as a region needs it. Yeah, I mean, let Kansas City have a moment. I think so. The only place where I got picked up in an Uber where a person had multiple dogs in the back. <laughs> Go on. I mean, that's pretty much the story. You get in an Uber and three dogs pop their head up with you. Were they cute? <laughs> they not as cute as as bad as they smelled. Oh. Three stinky dogs. Three stinky dogs in a stinky van uh, taking me to a comedy club. Yeah. Have you ever gotten in an Uber with somebody else and it's not a ride share? Like you're not sharing the car? I um, Where it's like someone picks you up. And, and it's they like, have a friend with them. Or they have their family. <laughs> I've seen that once before. But it, it's been more the dogs. The dogs in the back. And then I had another dog story where the guy had the dog up front with him. Oh. And then he, which is fine. I didn't mind. But then he was like, yeah, normally I don't ride with my dog. But uh, his best friend just died and he's depressed. And I was like, this is so sad. I love this journey, though. Yeah. Like, like go just, for it. Yeah, we just got ride. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> it was. Hey, Just Sayers, do you want to know what one of my favorite sounds is? It's this. <laughs> That's the sound I hear when I'm actually learning a new language with Babbel. And if you guys want to learn a new language in 2024, Babbel is the app for you. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel. It's actually a science-backed language learning app that actually works. I wanted to learn French this year, and guess what? I am learning. Slowly, but I'm still learning. 
Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in less than three weeks. It's designed by real people for real conversations, and it's fun. It's pretty much a game on your app. Just answer some questions right in the language that you want to learn. You'll hear the little bell, bling, that means you got it right, and you move on to the next lesson. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. I wanted to learn French this year, and each lesson is designed perfectly from the basics all the way to an expert level. Um, you know what? If I'm ever in Paris and I just get lost in a boulangerie, I know how to order a uh, pan de chocolat or un croissant. <laughs> un croissant. It's un. I learned that the other day at a French boulangerie. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off. That's 5-5% five, five off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash just saying. That's 55% off at babbel.com slash just saying, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash just saying. Rules and restrictions may apply. Big moment of the Super Bowl for me was... I mean, we had movie trailers. Did you see any of the movie trailers? No. Quiet Place, day one. No, don't. With Lupita Nyong'o. You know, did you see the Quiet Place movies? Uh, no, I don't. None of them? I'm a, you, what's is really fun about this to me is that you're super in the pop culture, and I don't know most people. <laughs> You don't like know you most were going people. through things, and I was like, okay, I know half those names. Like I don't know who Blake Lively is. You don't know who Blake Lively is. I don't know Lively if that is? is a man or a woman. Really? What do you think Blake Lively is? I think is? Blake Lively is probably a woman with brown hair. Who does what? Acts. In? Movies. Such as? No, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Lively is Ryan Reynolds' wife. Okay. And she was in Gossip Girl. Is that the red one? The one in the red? She, yes. Oh, I was like, oh, she was the pretty. I was like, that's the pretty one. And in the group, I was like, that's the pretty one. <laughs> she also uh, will respond to the pretty one. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, A Quiet Place Day One is the third installment of A Quiet Place uh, mm -hmm. trilogy, which is Emily Blunt and her husband, John. Uh, John. Blunt? What's his name? John Krasinski. Oh, from The Office. Whew. The guy from the Yes, gym, yes. Gym. And his wife, Emily Blunt. Okay. I didn't, they're married? They are married in okay, real life. That's yeah. fun. And so a, it's a hit movie. And the first movie is set like 400 days after these aliens arrive. So the third movie is the first day the aliens arrive. Oh, they're going backwards. With oh, the, you think they had that plan the whole time? I really hope so, because it looked good. I saw the trailer and I was, I nerded. Out. Like that was my wicked. Um, the wicked trailer dropped, which of course everyone's like, holy shit. It comes out November 27th, Thanksgiving weekend. We also had Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, okay. which they're still doing those movies sure, as well. Why not? Um, and then I think for the most part, that was really it for the movie. Oh, Twisters. They had the Deadpool and Wolverine Deadpool. one. People told me about that one. My friends were into the, that one. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. That one's going to be a little gay, I think. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think they like... <laughs> yeah, Blake Lively's married to Deadpool. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's Mrs. Deadpool. Mrs. Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see that and hopefully bringing the X-Men into the Marvel Universe finally. Um, And then they do uh, Twisters 2. Like Twister 1. Mm-hmm. With Helen Hunt. Yeah, I love Helen Hunt. We all love Helen yeah, Hunt. Yeah, I, I know if, her. I know her. If Helen Hunt doesn't make a cameo in Twister, then it's, it's not Twister. It. I tell you what, I mean, this is I can't hear because the thing I went to, um, oh, I went to a birthday party and Helen Hunt was there. What? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were leaving. Just randomly, did she know someone? Yeah. Okay. It was uh, Ke Kevin Nealon's birthday party. Okay. And. Um, she, I mean, I just saw her from the side, and so I was like, I'm not going to just going to be like, oh, that's Helen Hunt, but I'm not going to go. And then she came over to me and was like, you're so funny. Da, da, da. And I was like, you're Helen Hunt. Yeah. And that made me feel good because, you know, a lot of times people be like, you're not shit and you're not funny. And then I got to go, uh, do you think you know better than Helen Hunt? Yeah, Helen Hunt, Academy Award winning Helen Hunt. Yeah. She won, right? Helen Hunt won. Sure. Helen Hunt won an Academy Award. I'm, I'm going to say so. I'm going to say for 
that movie with Jack Nicholson as good as it gets. Okay. I, my, I'm sticking like to my gay movie. roots. I remember that movie. I really hope Twisters is good because what I did miss about the Super Bowl was back in the day, in the late 90s, early 2000s, they would show you the whole trailer and you were like, oh my God, this is what we're getting. Now they'll just show a snippet and be like, Watch the trailer online. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Because now everything's just available online. Other news, Beyonce. I know who that is. Beyonce is a singer mm -hmm. married to Jay-Z. Familiar with both of them. Blue Ivy. Yeah, and Blue Ivy. Blue mm -hmm. Ivy was actually at the Super Bowl as well with her sister, Rumi. Rumi. Which I always forget that she had twins. Allegedly. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Tell me what happened to Beyonce. The best thing happened to Beyonce. Beyonce killed it in a Verizon commercial. Okay. She was so good. Like, it was so nice to see Beyonce be funny. Yeah, that just made me a little depressed, though, to be like, oh, I got to, when I'm auditioning for stuff, I'm even fighting against people of Beyonce's caliber. Yeah. She's going to do commercials. Yeah. I would always think that Beyonce was beneath a cat, you know, a commercial, you a, know, she's commercials beneath Beyonce. Yeah, the yeah, commercial yeah. is beneath Beyonce. And no, she let us have it. She was funny. She poked fun at herself. Um, she the whole premise was to like break the internet, and Verizon was like, You can't break the internet on Verizon. I'm sick phone. of that term. I hate great. that term. Yeah, I get bored with break it. Break the internet. Yeah, it's like bromance to me. Bromance and break. Bruh, bruh, bro. I hate bro. Yeah, I hate bruh. Yeah, Ugh. get out of here with these things. Hey, bruh. Let's break the internet. Are you going to break the internet Ugh. with our bromance? Yeah. Get it's out of a, here. Yeah, just be gay already. Like, yes. You know, just be gay That's already. That's what I'm saying. Just be gay already. I have to mean in general, not to go too deep on it, but I hate the term bromance just in the fact that you're saying that men can't have just friendships. Mm -hmm. When it's a men, then you're like, oh, wow, it's so strange. It's a bromance. Yeah. It's like, these men guys are men friends. Are, yeah. <laughs> they must have sex with each other. Yeah. No. It's just two guys that are friends. Um, but she did amazing and she released the release date March 29th is Act 2 of Renaissance. Okay. So the sequel to her Renaissance album, which I put together in my head. Renaissance the term a renaissance woman, a renaissance man is someone who does many things mm -hmm. and very talented in many things. And I thought it was weird that the renaissance album, the first one was like all kind of a tribute to disco, her late uh, gay uncle, um, just kind of like give the gays the Studio 54 fantasy we have all wanted. Act two, however, is a country album. Oh, wow. So we're getting like... Cowboy Beyonce. Wow, she's leaning into the shift that's going on sonically just when radio. Wow. Yeah, she's going to shake up the CMA Awards like they've never been shook Not before. Little Nas X. I mean, it's kind of wild. As she has her first song that came out last night during the Super Bowl called Texas Hold'em. Mm -hmm. It's very country. Wow, did an AI write that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That sounds like a song title of an AI would write. Now that you mention it, the song kind of sounds like it could have been written by AI. Mm -hmm. She mentions a tornado going into the basement, Helen Hunt being there. <laughs> um, <laughs> mention how much she loves Ron Funch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. She talks about like doubling or playing poker, like very like cowboy mm -hmm. tropes. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get a cowboy, cowgirl, Houston, Texas country album from Beyonce. Interesting. And there's a third act coming. So I'm like, what's the third act? So we have disco, country. What is the third act? Mm. Polka? <laughs> could, it, <laughs> could it be Beyonce doing German Oktoberfest strudel hopping? What if it's just Beyonce doing Weird Al covers? That would be amazing. I would enjoy. I would totally enjoy. Just her doing Eat It and... But wait, how does she... Okay, let's do, like, Beyonce songs. You won't break my... Uh, you won't break my toe. There were some... <laughs> crazy. Um, 
<laughs> Stunk in love. S- skunk in love or something. There's something there. We'll workshop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like you. I'll be, a, I'll be a ghostwriter Give for Beyonce. Give full lyrics now. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> um, but I'm really, really excited about that. I think it's going to be a really fun twist. And I like that she just is like doesn't care. She's like, here's a country album. And everyone's like, oh, okay. Everyone's having to change their aesthetic from like silver cowboy hats now to like overalls. And yeah. <laughs> like she's going to make us all go back to the farm. I think it's going to be amazing. And also she, Madame Tussaud, I'm assuming this is Madame Tussaud. Yes. Released uh, Beyonce's newest wax figure, which, you know what? Which there one? it is on the left. Oh, that's it on the left. Yeah, that's and on the left. And that it looks like Leah Remini on the right. And everyone says it looks like Leah Remini. Now, I feel like... I feel I, like Leah Remini wishes that it looked like Leah Remini. Well, Leah Remini said, oh my gosh, I'm so flattered that you guys think this looks like me. Yeah. So that was her statement. Um, if this was actually a Leah Remini wax museum, it would have been in the Church of Scientology. That's true. Um, but it is not. It is Beyonce. And I feel like the hardest jobs in the world, it's probably like a single mom who works two jobs. That one. Yeah. Which, by the way, Reba killed it at the national anthem. I will say that. Um, next would be probably like a fireman. Sure. You know, anybody like in active duty, you know, soldiers, um, space. And then finally, a wax figure um, curator. Because nobody's get... ever happy with them. With the wax figures? Yeah. You have to be so right or everyone just drags you to filth. Yeah. Um, and I think you have to be based off of people who have to have like precise characteristics. Like if you have a really big nose or something, then people be like, oh, that's them. Yeah. But if it's just beyond, how do you capture the beauty of Beyonce in, in a wax figure? I mean, it's not like that inaccurate no i don't think so there is just some really bad wax figure i mean look uh, uh, uh. i mean i feel like a lot of them are usually like michael jackson Mm -hmm. in this day and age do we need wax figures i don't know they look haunted to me it does it feels like i know what someone looks like i feel Uh like before we had the internet Mm -hmm. and you were like oh this is what they look like because you we need a wax figure but now when i can access an image of them easily yeah why i I don't goes to go see these tourists why? It's like a thing. I don't know. It's what they do. If they can't get close to the celebrities themselves, mm-hmm. we'll stand next to this ball of earwax in the shape of them. I mean, literally, you might as well just go to Target and hang out near candles. Like Now we're talking. I'm a little hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say hang out at Target in the candle aisle? <laughs> Did someone say party? <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Um, I I I totally see where you're coming from. Yeah, look, this is like Christian Ronaldo. Like that's just I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that's. Fine. I would be insulted if like I had a wax figure that just did well, not look young, like me. They're not gonna make an old Ric Flair statue. Yeah, what? That's no. Kate Moss. These are all like bronzed. Yeah, there's a couple of wax at the top. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, that is not her. No. That's, that's in Madame Tussauds program. That's what it says behind her. Yeah, I mean, oh, uh, what, are, okay. what are the standards of a Madame Tussauds employee? What is that? Go up. What is that? <laughs> I, feel like I felt like Wendy one. Williams in that clip where she's like, James, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that's Melania Trump? <laughs> It's just, just that is the Blair Witch. Uh, I feel statue, statue of her in Slovenia that was recently destroyed. Oh, Slovenia mm. needs to step their pussy up because that is not what is that wood? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> God, uh, Ariana Grande. That's just some Megan Trainer lookalike on TikTok. <laughs> um. And then the rest are kind of... Lucille oh, Ball. Cla- yeah, I remember classic. that Lucille that's Ball. That's a classic one. That haunts yeah. my dreams. Absolutely. That's a shame. That's pretty terrifying. So, yeah. You know, um, I'm looking forward to the Beyonce country renaissance. Um, but let's talk 
games or do we have this? Okay, you're a big gamer. Sure, yes. I love games. What are your favorite games? Are you like a first player? Are you, uh, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> like the uh, Fortnite three person None of these are shooter. Incorrect. None of these are what? None of these are proper terms. <laughs> They're not? <laughs> no. First player? No. I mean, you, they can be. Sure. First player shooter? No. First player. What's the one where you like go around the town? You go around the town. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me feel better because I've been so ignorant of everything. No. And now you know nothing. I do know. There's the first player where you're like, you have the, like, you see everything. Sure. That's and not you, what it's called, but what's close. It called? It's close. You're close. It's called first person. First person. Yeah. Okay. First person. First person shooter. Yes. That's a game. Yes. Um, And then what's the one where you have to, like, go around and, like, do the missions and you see everything from afar? From above? Yeah. I like, mean, what's that it? one game that, like, everyone was playing? Not Farmville, but, like... Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing, yeah, yeah. like that. That's Little just missions. like a simulation. That's just like a city sim, yeah. I love video games. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get enough of them. <laughs> I actually clear. played some video games, so I like video games. I played The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. I played the new Spider-Man game. Okay, what? but to answer your question and not be rude to you, I like all types of games. Yeah. Uh, First-person shooters are fun. I like third-person games. I like a big fan of adventure games. Anything with a fun story yeah. are things that I can play with my friends that let me veg out and forget about the day. Well... Mortal Kombat 1 came out. Okay, yes. Great game. I love Mortal Kombat. I okay. love watching the fatalities. It's one of my favorite things because they just get grosser and grosser and they grosser. They do. Very violent. But this, I don't know if you heard about this, they're doing Mortal Kombat, but Disney characters. Okay. And we can actually watch a snippet. This is Cinderella versus Snow White. <laughs> Jasmine oh, comes Jasmine in. Oh, Jasmine gets involved. Pooh okay. versus Rafiki. <laughs> Oh, so they put a mod for... Okay! <laughs> Hades oh. and Hercules, and they do the, like, <laughs> neck break. Freaking the... neck. Um, they battle it out, of course. I mean, you have... They team up. Who's your favorite Disney princess? My favorite Disney princess? Yeah. I mean, if we're going, God, are we going classic or whatever? All... Whatever comes. I to like your Moana. Mind. Moana, that's your favorite. It's my favorite. Wow, I don't even think I saw that one. That Moana's was in between great. my when my oldest son was too old for me to have seen those movies. Yeah, but now I got the new one, so I'm like, I'm getting ready to dive back in. Yeah, what's who's yours? Uh, my favorite, probably Princess Jasmine. I she's think she's fun. so cute. Yeah. Mine's Moana just because, which they just released the teaser for Moana 2. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what it is about Moana. I just tear up every time I hear a native song, like from a from like a Hawaiian <laughs> tribe. Yeah. I went and saw Moana in theaters with Jesse Mae Peluso. And we were sitting in the theater and I said, I swear to God, if this starts off with some like Hawaiian chant, I'm out. And of course it starts with, yeah. And I'm like, Oh God! And I just start tearing up because it's just like <laughs> it's just so like passionate and beautiful and Hawaiian, and it's like oh, I just loved it. Does but, it makes you cry? Yeah. What else makes you cry? Coco. 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 Yes. Coco. Every time. Yeah. Moana and Coco. Every time. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm just like. Ugh. People I'm, achieving their dreams make me cry. Don't get me started. Yeah. Like like like. And America's Got Talent yeah. audition. Yeah, that goes well. Oh, yeah, yeah. and they, they get like the golden buzzer, and I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. Yeah, that's that that makes me tear up because I'm like happy for them. Watching NBA drafts of the past. I'm out. <laughs> you get you you think about it. An NBA draft from the past. Yeah, you get to watch people um achieve their dreams when they were young and also at least for me now, I know how they did in the future, and mm -hmm. that's fun. And then it's also fun um, 
to see the people where they're like, this person's going to, why are they even getting picked right now? They're going to suck. And then how wrong people are. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that makes me happy. I always think of that one clip of the, I think it was the NBA draft where the guy picked a different team and his like mom walked out. Yeah, I remember. Do you know that. what I'm yeah, talking yeah, 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 about? Yeah. Like she was like, we didn't talk about this in the mm-hmm. car and just like got up and left. Is he still playing? I think so. Yeah, it was for college. Um, yeah, he just was picking his college. And a lot of times other people have things involved. Maybe the parents are trying to get money, you know? Oh. Yeah. But like left in the middle of the ceremony. Yeah. She's like, nope. Not a great mom. Look, look, at that point, maybe she's done other great things for him. But I hope point, so. Not a good look for her. I, I know. Uh, Ooh, guys, we got a new sponsor. Yep, that's right. Factor. Delicious, ready-to-eat meals that make eating better every day. Whatever tomorrow takes you, Factors got you covered with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, plus so many more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? If you're on the go, Factor has got you covered. Two-minute meals. How easy is that? Throw it in the microwave. It's ready to go whenever you are. And they want you to sign up and save. They've done the math for you, so you don't have to. So Factor is less expensive. Hear me out. Less expensive than takeout. And every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. I got the chef's choice delivered to me, and it is just the chef's selection of clean eating, upscale options, at my door in no time, from pastas to meats to vegetables, easy, accessible, delicious. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are 100% ready to eat, so there's no prepping, no cooking or cleanup necessary. Chef's kiss. And right now, head to Factor Meals, F A C T O R M E A L S dot com slash Saiyan50 and use code Saiyan50 to get 50% off. That's code Saiyan50 at Factor Meals dot com slash Saiyan50 to get 50% off. Yes, chef. I'll tell you who is having a good look for them. Pink mm-hmm. right now. Pink is a singer. I know Pink. Okay, I'm just familiar check with it, Pink. You know, you sometimes know. she was upside down. She had a battle about her song catalog. Yeah, um, she seems great for any time I see her, and she tends to talk trash about people that I don't enjoy. Who so I like that? Who I don't did she recall. talk trash about? I think she would call, talk trash about Kanye West at some point. Oh yeah, um, and then just like other music industry people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, she's like she's kind of like the no bullshit artist. Yeah, which I kind of like about her. She just likes to sing do her show and go home and be a mom yeah so pink um who is america's favorite aerialist um she abruptly stopped her concert in sydney um because a woman went into labor Mm -hmm. in the middle of her concert and i'm gonna say this pink cannot get a break And every one of Pink's shows, I feel like someone is pulling some sort of a stunt. Someone threw a big old, like, wheel of cheese at her. (laughs) Someone gave their grandmother's or their mom's ashes to her. That was her. In a plastic bag. Okay, yeah. People are going into labor. Um, And what was the other one, Land? Like, oh, yes. She was in San Antonio, Texas. And some guy was protesting circumcision Mm -hmm. at her concert. Um, So this guy, let's see. I didn't know she did those. I don't think she, she does have a song called Who Knew? So maybe that's, (laughs) maybe that was, that that her whole thing was Pink does circumcisions. Mm -hmm. And this guy's like, my time is now. (laughs) I see you, witch, for the woman you are. (laughs) So she had to stop her concert because this woman went into labor. Um... At the uh, Allianz Stadium, after concert goers began waving from the crowd to signal the expectant mother had gone into labor, the the medic tended to the woman and she was taken out of the mosh pit. By the, can I just say, there's a pregnant woman in a mosh pit? I don't know what's weirder, that there's a pregnant woman in a mosh pit or that Pink has mosh pits. Yeah, both are very weird. 
So she's in the middle of singing the song, Our Song, and she was alerted. Um, and she stopped her concert. She says, is, is it Alicia or Alex being born right now? Referencing her birth name, Alicia Beth Moore. I'm only going to name it after her because they're at her concert. Obviously. Yeah. She goes, I feel like we shouldn't be looking. Everyone give her privacy. Wait, so Pink just expected this woman to just like... Pump a kid out at the, in the middle of her show. She's like, everyone move. Let her have her baby. <laughs> she didn't just have the baby, right? Is the baby here? No, okay. And then she said, congratulations. Um, but I get the mom. The labors can last for a while. So you could be like, oh, I'm going to go to the pink concert and then head to the hospital after. I guess so. But there's been, Beyonce had a baby born at her, co or a woman went into labor at a Beyonce concert. Mm -hmm. Here's one. A woman went into labor at a Metallica concert. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. The Metallica vibrations. pregnant mosh pit. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. And then the, 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 the ser child services just come and take the kid. <laughs> They're like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the mom just gets up and starts moshing again. Yeah. I'm glad she stopped the concert. And I'm probably I'm sure she's glad a woman went into labor and someone wasn't like, circumcision, you know, yeah. heckling her, throwing would, a wheel of brie at her. Would you like it if someone gave birth at your show? Absolutely. Okay. Did yeah. you stop the show? Or no. You, okay. No, I would. I would. I'd watch. Like, not a creeper, but I'd be like, <laughs> you okay? And then we'll see if, like, the security at the store mm -hmm. finally figures it out. Yeah. <laughs> we have to, like, I don't know. I wonder if that's ever happened here. If someone's given birth or just went in the labor at the comedy store? Yeah. That'd be fun to know. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything bad about, like, um, pregnancy or labor, because I just don't know. I just feel like if you're, like, Nine months pregnant. Do you have to go to the concert that bad? I think sometimes people just don't know. They don't feel it. And a lot, a lot of times, right when you ha are about to have the kid, you get this burst of energy that makes you feel like you're not about yeah. to have the kid. Or maybe they're like late and they're like, this will get yeah. me, yeah. like induce me pink. Mm -hmm. um, well, Or you're like, I really love pink and this might be my last chance to go see anything for a long time. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of pink, it is Valentine's Day. It is. Um, if you can, name off the top of your head okay. three of your favorite love songs. It doesn't have to be like, like emotional or, you know, mm -hmm. deep. Just like three that just stick out to you that you're like, oh, every time I hear that, it just makes me just feel better. Um, yeah, probably uh, Sweet Love by... Anita Baker? Yeah. All right. And then, um, what's the name of that song? It's Pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Break My Water by Pink. <laughs> <laughs> you won't break my water. There it is, Beyonce. Uh, okay. By the Sea. Is that the name of that song? Which one? B Bobby Darren. Is like, uh, the, the... Little Darling? No. no. Beyond the Sea. Oh, somewhere beyond, beyond the Sea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that song. I feel like it's a very romantic love song. Um, and then my third one would probably be just there's this song by this rapper I like named West Side Gun just called I Love You Bitch. That's pretty much it. Mm, that's just, a classic. Yeah. 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 It's just right to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch, I love you. Yeah, he says it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. I like those. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's the 20 essential love songs for your Valentine's Day playlist. And I want to get your oh, thoughts on Oh, these are them. all no way. If you put these on a playlist, you're corny. <laughs> You're what? Corny is You're hell. corny. If yeah. you have, I will always love you. I will you. always love you. Can I just tell you that my mom hated this song? Yeah. Growing up, I was like, she was like, she would always change the channel. She's like, I want your, you know, because at its base level, it is literally like just someone yelling in your face. Mm-hmm. But I'm all this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, because You Love Me by Celine Dion. No. No? Okay. When a man loves a woman. Yeah, I like that one. That's I, a great one. I think this is homophobic. <laughs> I have always, I have always thought this song was because I'm like, oh really? That's when a man, man loves, a woman, loves a woman, yeah, that's the only way it can go. 
the way the Bible told us so. When a man loves a woman, none of that in between bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. The only two genders that I know. Yep. Everybody go to their appropriate bathroom. Yep. Yep. That's, I mean, that's really what he's saying. <laughs> Same thing with Madonna, with La Isla Bonita. She says, when a girl loves a boy and a boy loves a girl. I'm like, Madonna, mm. how dare you? Um, be my baby. I like this one. That's a very classic. Be my, be my, be my little baby. Yeah. Um, you make me feel like a natural woman. No, I don't know. not necessarily. I mean, Aretha, so many better songs. Yes. All of Me by John Legend, Corny. Mm-hmm. Um, Unchained Melody, Ghost. <laughs> I, I always I always think of like horny pot making. Um let's see. God only knows the Beach Boys. That's cute. Yeah. Your song yeah, by Elton John. When you say nothing at all, no. Mm-hmm. At last, out yeah, of James. At last is only this is the first one where I'm like, yeah, look, the original Ice Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew no, Etta James? Etta James is the reincarnated version of Ice Spice. Oh my goodness. You're still the one by Shania Twain. Yes. Still I'm sorry. Still one of the sexiest, hottest videos of all time, I think. Yeah, it's a great one. How I've Deep re- Is Your Love? No. Never. Try a Little Tenderness? Yeah, no. I like that one. You like, I that, like one? that one? Yeah. Um, Isn't She Lovely that's by on, Stevie Wonder? That's on the corny side. Make You Feel My Love, Adele? No. Mm-mm. Yellow by Coldplay? I'm not going to listen to a single Coldplay song. That's not happening. I Can't Help Falling in Love with You? I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Uh, No. Yeah, that makes me feel like I'm going to church. Um, Mine, I'm going to give you mine. Some of mine are very... Okay. I love SWV Week. Yes. Um, PM Dawn. Since I... Die without you. Okay. That's such okay. a good one. I love that one. Mine are, mine are very like, okay, these are the mom jeans inspired love songs. Unbreak My Heart, Tony Braxton. That's a great one. One of my favorites as well. Hold On, Wilson Phillips, which over the past weekend got to see Carney Wilson herself sing this at karaoke and I exploded. <laughs> Black Velvet by Alana Miles. I Love You Always Forever. That's a good one. Donna Lewis. Linda Ronstadt and Aaron Neville. Mm. I don't know how much, but I know I love you. I just feel like most times, if I want to listen to a romantic song, I don't even want them to say words like I love you yeah. or and stuff like that. I want it just to be in the vibe of it. Sometimes even 21 Savage can the, the, just the beat. It's a strong beat that says, <laughs> I'm about to fuck the shit out of you uh, is enough. Did someone say box of chocolates? <laughs> <laughs> What about Save the Best for Last by Vanessa Williams? Okay. If Vanessa Williams was like, I'm going to beat your throat. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, Vanessa. Yeah. You did save the best for last. <laughs> um, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that by Meatloaf. Did you know what I won't do that was? What was it? What do you think it is? Uh, is it to him, to her? Um, pegging? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When in Quick doubt, answer. it's Peggy. Yeah, I but, agree with him. But also, we all know what Meatloaf looks like. Yeah, he looks no like he should be Peg. I'd rather Peg actual Meatloaf <laughs> than Peg the singer Meatloaf. But he looks like he should be Peg. <sighs> Maybe he should have done that. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> he, he was afraid to open the door. Uh, that was such a good video, though. I miss, like... Late night or early nineties love songs. Um, what is this? This is Healthy Relationships Initiative. Okay, so everyone wants to. Uh, one of the big things for Valentine's Day this year is they want to recreate their first date. No. So this is reliving the initial moments of falling in love is a fun and exciting way to reconnect with one another. One simple way to remember some of the excitement of the early days of your relationship is to recreate your first date. Go back to the spots where you went on the first date for somewhere similar if you've moved away or those spots don't exist anymore. (laughs) 
While you're there, talk about your memories, what you were thinking and feeling on that first date. Share what your early hopes were for the relationship. Okay, so pretty much let's just backtrack to where we all started. Yeah. Recreating a first date can be a fun and exciting way to remember how far you've come since the early days of your relationship, as well as help you remember some of the hopes and dreams that you've had for the future of your relationship. I feel like if you want to dig into this, this super deeply, you should just admit that you want to sleep with somebody else. Yeah. Because you're like, I don't, we got to go back to where we were. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why can't we dig deeper and go forward and form new memories? Why are you looking so back to the past of our first day? <laughs> and also... The first date wasn't that great. No this guy's way. holding like baby's breath and yeah. like lame ass target daisies. And she's not happy. I feel like, and everyone now is on an app. Mm -hmm. So the first date is what? Coffee. And then you go I used to bang go it out after coffee. <laughs> Sometimes. Was that just my first date? <laughs> no, that's happened. Sometimes that's happened. One time I took a lady and we just got a tea and a pastry and then we went and had sex. And I was like, this is, you should value yourself more. <laughs> <laughs> After you said that to her, <laughs> we had tea and pastry and we had sex. And afterwards, I was laying beside her and oh, I said, You lady. should value yourself lady, more. Come on. I just There's met the door. You. I don't know you. I don't recall your name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What would your date be? Uh, my general, I do a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a fair few amount of first dates currently. And I tend to go mini golf and I like going to mini golf um, or a tea based chat. Sometimes if I'm really excited about them, then a dinner, dinner. Um, but sometimes you will learn quickly that people won't want to just go to the nice dinners, you know? That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going right into the next segment perfectly because Gen Z, uh, men specifically. I thought you were communicating with me. I didn't know you were using me as a segue. No, it flowed perfectly into this what I'm talking about. This new generation of men are going traditional and taking their women out to dinner like the olden days. Yeah, I didn't know that that was out of style. It is. That's what, no, I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, now I know. I'm familiar now, yeah. but I don't drink. So, like, I can't ever be like, hey, let's go meet up at a bar or anything like that. So, I always tended to do dinners. And then a lot of the women I would go out with would be, like, so shocked by it. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to take you out of your element. if It's just not what you're used to. I feel like dinner's so tricky, though. Because then it's like, what if you just don't vibe and it's like... You're stuck there watching some stranger eat pasta in front of you. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. It happens, but at least then I have a good dinner. That's why I pick Fair. places that I like. But no, it's just been mini golf because I like mini golf. I like mini golf. I like going, yeah. I like that you go outside of the traditional thing. I like that. I like, like, like a, like a putt putt golf or like, even like laser tag could also, be fun. It's a, a good ask because I also know, like, if a lady's like, oh, I'm interested in going out, you, but I don't want to go mini golf. I'm like, well, you're. Probably not my type if you don't want to go mini golfing. Or like an arcade. Yeah. They got an arcade there too, yeah. Dave and Buster's. Like something like that you can connect with. Mm -hmm. I always hate it when people are like, oh yeah, we're going to a movie. I'm seeing, I'm, I'm meeting up with this guy or this girl and we're going to go sit in the dark. I would never other. imagine the first date as a movie. How so, am I going to get to know you? Exactly. Some people do that. And they're like, well, that was fun. Okay, bye. Yeah. No. But, um... This new thing is Gen Z men are going traditional. They're covering women's costs on date night. And they said equality didn't mean we should pay the same. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, Gen Z date night. Despite being seen as politically progressive when it comes to gender equality, young American men are still expected to pick up the tab for the women they're wooing. And they're more than happy to do so. A survey of 552 heterosexual college students... <laughs> <laughs> when a man knows a woman As that song's playing in the back <laughs> Cited in a new report by the New York Times Found that Zoomer men I didn't know they were called Zoomers uh, Paid for their dates 90% of the time Gen Z women, on the other hand Paid in full for just 2% of the dates they went on While 8% of dates were split evenly between the sexes The traditional pattern is still there Professor uh, Sean Hong 
Luau, Lu, sure, who conducted the research told the publication. Okay, mm-hmm. so they're saying that men are, are there is a group of chivalrous mm-hmm. Zoomers out there. So I love that. I do too. That's how I date. I like the idea of, I still open the door for yeah, people. Me too. Um, I love you because you also learn a lot. I learn a lot from, I'm a, Big into whatever this is because I have considered myself extremely progressive in a lot of ways, and then also, but I'm very traditional mm-hmm. when it comes to dating. I, if I ask you on a date, um, and that's kind of how I look at it. Whoever asks someone for that activity, I'm assuming that you're in my care. If I asked you, you're in my care. It's my job to hopefully make sure you have a great time to the best of my ability, um, to take care of the bill for dinner, and to uh, make sure you get home safely, whether that's getting you to your car or getting an Uber for you or whatever that is. That's what I think you should do for anyone. If I'm willing to take you out, mm-hmm. then I should be willing to show that much care for you. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm a big fan. That. Well, it's just showing that you're invested in spending time with this person. Mm-hmm. And some people, uh, phones away. Yeah. Phones away. Yeah. Not on the table. No. In your pocket, leave them in your car. I don't know, wherever, but don't have your phone on the table. Oh. Look at us just giving advice for these Valentine's Day it. couples. I do a lady to pay for, for, we went out to a sushi lunch and she paid for me and made me, I was like, oh, look at me. I'm a little, I'm a little sweet treat. <laughs> See, and I think that's how it is. I like my boyfriend and I, we do that every now and then. It's like, oh, I got this, you know, or it's on me. Or, and then sometimes we'll be like, let's just split it. And that's just grown. But I do feel like if there's like, there's just something so exciting to like a new, you know, romance where you're like, oh, like, I, let me take, mm-hmm. let me take care of this and let me open the door for you. And yeah. I and and mostly that. with, um, if you get into one of my best tests for any type of date is if we get in an Uber together or something and I open a door for them and then find out if they do the scoot or not. Do Ooh. they scoot? And I'm, oh, especially out in LA. Ooh, good majority of these bitches ain't scooting. <laughs> And if you can't scoot, you ain't going to be with me on a second, third date. That Wait, happening. scoot? What do you mean scoot? Like, it means well, I think, I someone, you, you you know? What is scooting? Oh. Yeah. And sometimes they don't. And then you got to walk around to the other side. That's amazing. I never even thought about that. Yeah. Like, scoot. Yeah. Yeah. Scoot. But sometimes they don't scoot. Sometimes they don't scoot. And you You're learn right. a lot. So they just sit there and go, yeah. <laughs> You're like, bitch, scoot. Yeah. It's going to totally... be so much better for you to scoot yeah. instead of me walking, walking around, around in the, the traffic. traffic. Yep. yep. Oh, my God. I'd scoot for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank oh, you. Ron, please tell everybody where they can find you. This has been so much fun. Make sure also to check out Loot Season 2, Rock, Paper, Scissors on Nickelodeon. Um, Loot comes out April 3rd, I April believe. 3rd. On, yes, yes. Rock, where paper, can everyone scissors. find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Ron Funch. Uh, you can go to ronfunches.com to come see me on tour. I'm on, on the road, a bunch of places. Phoenix, Louisville, a bunch of places. Just go to ronfunches.com and see if I'm in your town. Um, and then what? Let's to my podcast getting better with Ron Funches yes. which is just a comedic self-help podcast where I interview some guests to find out how they're getting better in their craft and their life mm-hmm. or I just talk for a while and you find out very personal things about me that are going <laughs> on in my life that I probably shouldn't share oh well it's always so good seeing you and thank you for being here yeah man it really means a lot happy Valentine's happy Day happy Valentine's Day to you <laughs> thank you for having me and we'll see you next time here on the Just Say podcast you guys have a good one bye bye bye